All right. Hello, I'm David Scheimer. I'm the superintendent at Burton School District, and it's an honor to be able to kind of talk through our story a little bit as we've been journeying through the scorecard process that has been over the past few years. Um, we did start about three years ago with uh, bringing together stakeholders and setting up strategic plan pillars based off of our uh, feedback that came from them. And hearing that, we really came down to four strategic pillars that we've been focused on as a district. Then we got to to the point where we started thinking, what do you do with those pillars besides just have them available to look at on our website and to talk about every so often? And how do we really live these pillars? And how do we live that mission, which is empowering the whole child to be successful in college in the world? And we saw that, uh, well, some of the keys were a process besides a strategic plan, but having scorecards that keep us as department teams and as site level teams keeping track of the progress towards those, those action steps that we're taking. And then PDSA also became a big part of what we're aiming to do as a district is kind of that concept of being continuously improving the plan, do, study, act cycle. And then we really see it as key as we think through it is that coaching and leadership development happens throughout the entire process. And we are very um, lucky to be able to partner with Studer Education and have that coaching and leadership development along the way, because that helps us continue to progress in our areas of growth, which really come down to how do we make a scorecard? Um, so our scorecard progression didn't come out looking amazing at first. It was kind of our first shot at it was a district scorecard was putting some goals down. Like what are some goals we want to have? What are some growth goals? What are some goals that we'd want to have in our survey responses? And then we had a unique pillar, which was improvement, efficiency, and innovation. And how does that look with our plan, do, study, act cycles that are happening? And then through some progression, we realized that our scorecard wasn't necessarily leading to us tracking that progress as well. So with some help of fellow partners, um, we did get to a scorecard that really this year has some progression or progress. Uh, so our 2023-24 scorecard has a way to track those numbers and have conversations around them and see, did we really succeed with some of those goals? And we found there was a really big split between not just academic goals or not just progress in academics, but we saw that those surveys were very important is um, rather than us just kind of saying, oh, we think we did pretty good. We were able to start thinking through using some of those um, employee experience survey, parent caregiver survey, and really see some progress being made and knowing how we're really doing through that. The site and department scorecards also came this year. So we have a total of 19 scorecards, um, be nine sites and 10 departments. And they're all working towards action steps that are leading to progress. Hopefully that they're aiming for on their scorecards that all connect back to our pillars. So um, through that, there's the public facing school site scorecard that's connected to the pillars, but then there's also our department or site department scorecards. And I have an example here on our poster from one of our sites. And each quarter, we, we kind of do a quarterly review of our scorecard and we put new strategic actions down, but we stop light our strategic actions from the quarter before and we say, are we making progress? Green light, we're, ma we're making progress or we succeeded in that? Kind of that adapt, adopt, abandon cycle. Uh, red would be that we didn't quite get there, or maybe we want to abandon it and start a new goal as we start thinking about our next quarter. Um, we did find along the process, as I'd mentioned earlier, that tracking survey data was a huge factor um, in our scorecards. So half of the of the information on our scorecards leads back to our survey data because it's not just about how we're scoring, like you said, academically or about how we're scoring on a test or a score. It's how our education partners seen how our services are provided to them. So it's definitely, um, I think the survey data is one of the biggest factors we have, which we have at the fall and the spring. And then <clears throat> when we start thinking about PDSA being one of those huge goals that we had is how do we continue to make sure we're making progress, not just tracking on a scorecard, by, so we saw department PDSAs, so our departments are working on one thing at 20% of their time that they dedicate towards something they want to get done and using a PDSA tracker form that's pretty simple. What are we trying to solve? What's our plan? How are we going to do it? 
And then are we going to adapt, adopt, abandon, move forward? And then we have our grade level teams doing that as well, or content teams um, at the site level doing it on every Wednesday. We have a plan time for PDSA that they're working around one of those goals that leads back to our um, scorecards. Much of it revolves around reading or literacy that we have as a focus, as well as math. And then um, what we're working on currently, and this is kind of a work in progress, is our student level PDSA so that we kind of have that full circle, um, department, grade level, and student level, and students tracking a progress point, which might be an example I have on the on the poster would be, might be their writing goal, or it might be their um, their Spanish, how they're using their Spanish oracy. Um, those pieces all lead back once again to the, the grade level PDSA and back to the scorecard at the site level. And finally, I think some of the key factors we found that keep us moving forward is our always behaviors rounding two times per year has become something that is very important to us to make sure not just from our surveys, but we're getting it from those that directly report to us. The information that helps us improve, it feeds our PDSA, it feeds our action plans. Um, our scorecard development, quarterly view of stop lighting is something that's always done. And those PDSA cycles are very important to continue to make sure we move forward. And the last one that kind of comes to mind it is um, the cascading and communication, intentional cascading through um, huddles. And then it becomes through strategic meetings that happen and making sure we really have a communication process that um, involves school board to the cabinet, to the staff, and then ultimately gets to the community. So that gives you a little bit of an idea of our progress that we make in our scorecard journey. We've still got progress to be made. We haven't seen through a final scorecard quite yet. It'll be at the end of this year. See how that progress really looks as we shift to a new year and also how we look at our student level PDSA and continue to grow that because that's 4,800 different improvement cycles running with our students that take us to another level. So we're looking forward to that. So I thank you for your time and definitely feel free to reach out if you have any additional questions.